Hello! Just a very quick review, I think it'll be very quick, for the illustrated Roger Zelazny that I've just reread. I am quite proud of this book. As you can see, it was second hand, $1.60 from somewhere or other when I, when I got it, which I suspect was probably sometime back in the 90s. Um, the cover has got that little bit of a spine, I suppose you'd call it damage, but I've always been very careful about reading it, so it's never been fully opened out. And it is, it's all about the illustrations, which are amazing. So the illustrator is Gray Morrow. Like Roger Zelazny, he started out writing for pulp magazines, well, illustrating for pulp magazine, whereas Zelazny wrote for pulp magazines. I'm guessing they probably had a long relationship before they embarked on this particular novel. And this particular novel is a bit of a groundbreaker because, of course, these days graphic novels are everywhere and I've got heaps of them and I love them. But when this came out, they weren't that common. So just checking the date. The Illustrated Rogers Lasney. 1978 Byron Press Visual Publications, which was an Ace Books, this is an Ace Books edition. At that stage you had comics, which were for kids, and they usually had speech bubbles that said things like Zap and Kapow. There were adult illustrated magazines. France especially, I think, had a lot of them. And many of them were science fiction, they're very good. I had a few back in the day. I couldn't read them very well and not French and Google Translate didn't exist back then but some of the artwork was spectacular. It wasn't mainstream in America nor I think England so this was an experiment. This was an experiment that Zelazny and Grant embarked upon and it was a successful one. So this is the cover it's just inside the cover where it says you hold in your hand a major new work of graphic science fiction it's a selection from the Science Fiction Book Club and featured in Heavy Metal, which was a magazine that I used to like, haven't seen it around for a long time. So within it, you've got over 30 pages of fantasy in full colour, which includes 16 pages based on Zelazny's Amber series, which was big. I think most people who know Zelazny mainly know him from Nine Princes in Amber, etc., and the, this artwork is lovely. It's just plain beautiful. This is an introduction to the Nine Princes in Amber sex selection, where you've got Grant's version of the, the cards that are used by Prince Corwin to figure out who he was and for all of the House of Amber to communicate and go from place to place. Now, I've got to say, these aren't quite how I imagined them. But if you accept them in terms of beautiful artwork in their own right, the fact that Grant and I imagined the uh, um, but a bit differently is hardly surprising. Gorgeous artwork. Gorgeous. It was a successful experiment, this one. So apparently what happened was it was brought out in hardcover, twice as big as this, around about twice as big, I think. And I did, I did read the introduction, and the introduction, uh, introduction talks all about it. The experiment was a success, Zelazny is proud to say. The book went back to press. The hardcover signed edition sold out. And the book became the first collection of graphic stories to ever be selected by the Science Fiction Book Club. Comics or graphic stories, as we prefer to call them, were at last accepted as a legitimate form for science fiction and fantasy on a sophisticated level. So if, like me, you're very fond of graphic novels, you should probably look at this and say thank you, Roger Zelazny, for enabling our current addiction and money sink. This book was, it was a good time to read it because... Um, in it, you've got introduction, you've got Shadow Jack. Shadow Jack is a new story. It happens before Black, 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 uh, Jack of Shadows and is a bit different to it. Then you've got the Zelazny Tapestry, the Amber Tapestry that I just showed you some pictures from, A Rose for Ecclesiastes and The Furies, 
the doors of his face, the lamps of his mouth. Now, I've recently reread Rose of Ecclesiastics, The Furies, and The Doors of His Face, The Lamps of His Mouth. I think the review for that is somewhere amongst my videos. And, of course, they have to be abrev abridged in order to fit them in with artwork. So, that worked well for me. I already knew the whole story. The artwork sort of dressed on top of it. I loved the Shadow Jack tiny story. Jack of Shadows was my first Roger Zelazny book. I've always loved it excessively. Uh, Reread it every now and then. And this like mini story of how Jack is forced to become the thief who steals for a particular sorceress has got beautiful line drawing. There's not a lot of shading in this compared to some of his other work. And it is very classic sci-fi underdressed women type artwork. You either love that type of artwork or you can be offended by it. I always loved it. I, lo I loved Boris, the Boris work. I loved all the other artwork of the series. Part of the class joy of classic science fiction is the amazing artwork that comes on some of the cover. So that is the Shadow Jack story. Then just before the Nine Princes in Amber, we have a Zelazny tapestry. This is more um, sophisticated artwork perhaps than the line drawings that you get in Shadow Jack. I'm not going to open this book fully, I won't risk the, the binding. But here you've got much more nuanced shading. I'm still not entirely sure what that picture is meant to be from because you've got a series of pictures that come from all the way through Zelazny's work. That might be meant to be Damnation Alley, not quite sure. Um, but you have a whole lot of images that are classic science fiction artwork. And that and the Amber Tapestry, neither of them have a whole lot of story. They are all about the images, which are totally worth enjoying. Again, we're back to Amber here. Not sure about this little hostess cap there, but I think that's meant to be Rebma. Anyway, Grant doesn't concentrate as much on uh, Corwin's sisters as he does on his brother's. But you get that. A Rose for Ecclesiastes. Um, if it's a story by Zelazny that you've read, you know it's about a poet and incredibly overgifted uh, linguist who goes to Venus, Venus, Mars, Venus. I can't believe I've forgotten this. I think it's Mars. And you've got this level of black and white drawing for it. Um, very well done. So what you've got through this particular version of A Rose for Ecclesiastics is a drawing combined with text. And I like it. I probably enjoy it more because I've read A Rose for Ecclesiastics, the whole version of it recently. So the... Individual illustrations were basically a bonus on top of the story that I already know. Uh, this is a good one. This is uh, our hero's encounter with the native guardian of the temple. And I really love what Grant has done here in terms of colour and artwork. We then move on into the Furies. The artwork for the Furies is good. Again, it's black and white. You've got black, small black and white interspersed with um, text abridged from the actual story. It works well enough. I like the artwork. The story itself is good. And we end on a story that I I mean, I liked all the stories, but I really did like the story of the doors of his face and the lamps of his mouth. Here again, we've got the small art panels interspersed with text. And some of these panels are absolutely marvellous. Now, the artist largely avoids some of the most stereotypical um, 60s and 70s artworks, which is to say there are women wearing not very much, but that's not the whole of his repertoire. Grey Morrow, I will mention this one particular piece of art from the Doors of His... Uh, the Doors of His... Uh, 
the last story where which is told by the bait man the doors of his face and the lamps of his mouth here we are so he's pictured um the narrator and the woman go via scuba and it's a bit of a challenge and it's a bit dangerous i really like the drawing of this so yes that thing that she's wearing does not in any way approximate a bathing suit let alone the sort of suits that you'd wear to go underwater but if you look at her proportions especially the li lines of the leg and arm drawing they're actually very good so you've got good quality artwork and this most beloved book that i'm very happy to still own i've had it a long time like i said from the 90s i'm gonna guess and this book has traveled with me around australia it probably went into storage a couple of times but since the 90s i've lived in more than a dozen places and i think we have survived fairly well ignore the one dollar sixty at the top concentrate on that beautiful artwork and thank roger zelazny for giving us the trade paperbacks that we know today without him we may never have got them